Hello, Mr. Walleye here. Today we're going to do a tutorial on an Eskimo Mako 43 ice auger. I bought it off of Craigslist. Um, it was two years old. He said he hasn't drilled more than two dozen holes with it and it needed piston rings. Um, we'll go through this a little bit here. I, I didn't pay much for it at all. I bought it and uh, I got it home and sure enough 65 pounds of compression. I thought, well, I'll take it apart. Called, called Eskimo, they don't sell the internal parts. I said, well, great. So I started searching the internet because I knew these motors couldn't be exclusive to Eskimo. And they're actually scooter motors. Um, they're the same thing as a scooter motor. You just got to make sure you take good measurements, piston size, and obviously jog and everything else. So anyhow, I took the cylinder off. I thought I'd get away and try a set of, just a set of rings, see if that would do it. Because they, they were scored and I uh, ordered a set of rings and needless to say I put it back together and the jug was scored up so bad that, uh, well, it still only had about 68 pounds of compression. So I ordered a jug, a piston and a set of rings and this is what we're going to do today. Um, we're going to, I'm going to try to do this in several clips otherwise it might get pretty long but I'm going to take it completely apart again. And uh, I'm going to try to video it, putting it back together in, in, in clips or, you know, and I'll try to do the best tutorial I can on it. Um, but anyway, like I said, they're actually a scooter motor. I got my parts from partsforscooters.com. Just took a lot of, a lot of uh, research on the internet versus buying a whole new power head for 250 bucks. Um, I got with the jug, the piston, the rings. And the previous set of rings that I bought, I got $60 into it, plus what I paid for it, which was less than 100 bucks. So, anyhow, duh, we'll do a tutorial on this, and and uh, I'll see what I can do. I'll try my best here to get some good picks and everything. And this is Mr. Walleye here. This is the auger. I've got it partially torn apart, not fully yet. Um, like I said, we're going to... Do a tutorial of putting it back together, hopefully in clips, otherwise it'll just get too long. But anyhow, nice auger, real good shape. He said it, it only drilled less than two dozen holes, and I know that's all it did. But uh, after I did some looking, you know, diagnostics on it, um, looked in the gas tank, you know, obviously before I bought the first set of rings and never mixed any oil with it. So I did seize it up, you know, scored the rings and obviously scored the jug too much to where I can't seat the rings. But anyhow, that's what we got. The, there's my new jug. There's my new piston and rings. There's my old rings. I broke one taking it off. But that's the plastic. Like I said, they're, they're actually scooter motors. And uh, the only difference on, a, on this versus a scooter motor is the plastic coverings, you know, and, and that's all just for looks. So anyhow... I'm going to shut this off and get it tore apart there and hopefully when we're putting it back together we can make some short clips. I'll see you shortly. Mr. Walleye here, Mr. Walleye here again. Um, first thing I want to show you real quick, a couple things about pistons and when you order pistons. Um, this is the old piston. See this one has an arrow right there. Always to the exhaust side. The new piston, which is kind of a shitty casting, has a dot. That goes to the exhaust side too. But when you order pistons, you want to take it apart and measure your pistons. And what you want to measure, if I can do this here, is you take a dial caliper, which is one of these neat tools, and you want to measure the diameter at the right here at the skirt. You want to measure that. This one's 40. Then you want to measure If I can get this to stay still, then you want to measure from the from the center of this right to the lip, center of your wrist pinhole, right to the lip, and uh, that'll probably give you, give you the what you need for a piston. Also, you need to measure your wrist pin your your wrist pin. This one's a 10 millimeter. That's what holds the piston to the connecting rod. I've already installed these rings. Um, they're really easy to put on. Just don't scratch up the piston when you put them on there. But uh, that'll be part one here. I'm going to take a second here and we'll get back. Okay, I'm back. What we're going to do now is we're going to install 
the, the piston. Um, I've installed the circuit clip on the other side already. It's a lot easier to do it on the harder side before you put the piston on. This is a relatively easy process. Take your wrist pin bearing, slide it right in the connecting rod. Don't let it fall. Just wiggle the piston down over it. And then take your wrist pin, just wiggle it a little bit until you can push it in. These ones aren't pressed in, some are pressed in. And then you just wiggle it in. Relatively easy. Then take the sur clip and that goes right in right in here to hold the wrist pin in. I'm gonna shut off and we'll get back. Okay, one more thing I want to show you. Your piston rings, right, right there, those. Make sure those grooves line up with that pin. See that pin? Because when you squeeze them together, you want them to squeeze up close to that pin. And I'm just going to do this with the old piston ring, or show you how, you know, see if I can't do it here. But really, it's relatively easy. Squeeze that, squeeze that together, and then just take the jug and slide it. Then you check your second ring. And you squeeze that together and slide the jug down. Make sure those pins, make sure those pins are lined up with your piston ring. I'm just showing you this on the old jug and piston, but this is how you do it with anything new too. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and slide the new jug on the piston on the engine and we'll do the next one after a minute. One more thing I want to point out real quick. Make sure when you put your jug on, you know which side is intake and exhaust. This is the intake side. Make sure you know which way, which side that came off. It's not hard, just look for your fuel lines on your motor. Obviously your fuel lines will be on the carburetor side and that'd be the intake and that's the exhaust. Just make sure you slide it on them the right way. I mean, you can turn it a little bit, but you don't want to twist it all around. You don't want to score up you don't want to score the inside of this jug like this one is. <laughs> it's also a good idea taking a new cylinder jug. Just rub some two cycle oil in there. Doesn't have to be a lot. Just so things uh, slide smoothly and you don't score it up. Now with the jug on there, I've already installed the th three other mounting bolts. It's really easy to use a magnet and just a little plier to start them. At least to get them lined up in their holes, just slide it down in the jug. Use that player to pull it off. And then just use your Allen wrench and spin them on. Run them down hand tight first, all of them evenly. Which I've done on the other three already. And once that's hand tight, just take a crescent wrench or something, get on the end of your Allen wrench. You want to tighten these evenly in opposite pattern, crisscross. And uh, go over them several times. I'm sure there's specs on how many inch pounds or foot pounds it should be, but I'm not sure, so I'm just going to tighten them to my liking. We'll be back. You gotta take your old studs out, out of your old jug for the exhaust. Real easy. Just spin them in with your fingers. And then you don't want to grab the threads obviously, but just grab that. Don't put them too tight because the exhaust once you put your nuts on there, it'll pull it tight. Let's just snug. Now we'll, now we'll take the muffler. Don't forget your gaskets. Obviously, same down here, your base gasket on your jug. I'm reusing my old one here. It's relatively easy. 
slide that on. There's two nuts and a screw right here. Okay, what we do is put the intake manifold on now for the carburetor. I had to make a new gasket. Good thing I had gasket paper, but just two screws, real simple. Make sure you put it on right. I don't know how tight you want to go. I get them snug down pretty good. Just remember it's aluminum. And we'll just put the carburetor on. Two screws, pretty simple. Make sure you tighten them evenly. Don't forget your primer line it needs to be hooked up in that clip inside there. Now that I got the carburetor on, I don't even got the fuel line hooked up or the throttle hooked up. But before I do all that other work, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to check the compression now that we put a new piston rings and jug on there. Pretty sure it'll be fine, but we'll just take a compression tester, screw it in here. Right where the spark plug goes. I don't suspect it needs to be real tight, but um, we're just wanting an idea anyway. You know, like I said, last time we had 65 pounds of compression. We'll see what we got right now. Hopefully, it'll be good. It's kind of an awkward angle to pull, pull, but anyhow. Well, I'm going to try it. Let's see here. Well, we're right out of box. 130 pounds of compression. That's a good, good sign. Um, remember, the rings ain't even seated all the way yet, so the, that compression will probably go up. So now I'm going to put the rest of it back together. All it is is a fuel line, the uh, throttle cable, the air box, which is pretty simple to do. And I got to hook up my uh, kill switch yet, spark plug, and then all the plastic, which is real easy. I don't need to show you how to do that because you already did that, I'm sure. But we know this is good. So. Um, we're just going to go ahead and put this together, put some fuel in there, and uh, I'll record when I start it, and we'll see how things go. This is about 24 inches here. 24 inches of ice.